Hi, I'm Kevin McDonnell, elite trainer at Progressive Property. Over the last 18 years, I've built a multi-million pound property business and I'm known as the UK's leading expert at creative, no money down property investment strategies. A few months ago, I came to this very property and I met with Alex Moyes. This is Alex's first ever buy to let property. If you haven't seen that video, you can watch it here, but let me give you a quick update. Alex and his wife bought this property when it was completely run down. They've now got the renovation finished. So let's go inside and see what work they've done. Make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that notification button. Before we go inside, safety first, let's get the mask on. Hi, Kevin. Hiya. Come in. Hello. Hi. This room looks completely different. So what did you do in here? So in here, we took out the old fireplace. Um, the whole place has been rewired and then replastered, which makes it look really sharp. Um, new central heating system, which you can see in here, and then carpets. And this room was probably one of the easier rooms, actually. So you literally did everything. New wiring, new plumbing, new, new plastering, new painting, new carpets. Yep. Remove the fireplace. So you, you blocked the fireplace up, but you've left the actual fireplace behind it. Yes. I thought it was too much work to take all the bricks out. So, so this was the dining room before. And again, the same thing here. We took the old fireplace out. Uh, there was a lot of damp in here, if you remember, all yeah. the way around. Um, so we had to fix the damp and then again, the same thing. But it was good. It's had a damp proof course put in. The walls have been tanked and then they were re-rendered and re-blasted. So this took quite a lot of time, actually, even though relatively straightforward. And your kitchen is where you did most of the work, isn't it? Yeah, this is one of the areas where we've added the most. So I remember from the previous video, that was actually a shed and the kitchen was just near this wall? Yeah, it was just the other side of the wall. Um, and then uh, it was like a coal shed and an outside toilet. So we took the wall down, um, insulated it. I had to have, because building regulations, really thick insulated board, um, new floor, um, new electrics, new window down the end, because that was a wooden one. Um, and uh, New boiler? Decorate. Yeah. New boiler because it was all electrics before, old storage heaters. Yeah, you've kept the doors right through the house, have you? Yeah, we actually restored some. Um, they were all painted over and covered up before. Um, so we stripped them back, sent them off to be um, like stripped and dipped and oiled by a proper company and put them back up. It looks like a completely different property. Can we have a look upstairs? Yeah. So we're in the master bedroom, really nice room now. I remember this, it used to look pretty bad. So we've done, it looks like you've obviously replastered again. Yeah, so actually there was loads of cracking and stuff all underneath the window and the fireplace was really, it had been um, bricked up in a really dodgy way before. So it's all been stripped back, uh, rewired. Plastered re ceiling? Uh, yeah, actually we repaired the ceiling in this one. Right. Um, and then we bricked in the, uh, the old cupboard as well. Yeah, there used to be a cupboard here, wasn't there? So we've made use of it somewhere else. Right, so we've done what we were talking about moving the bathroom. Wow, so this used to be part of that bedroom and yeah, you've moved. Right. So when I remember this bathroom was down the end of the house, yeah. you've turned that into another bedroom. Yeah, yeah. So this was a two bedroom property. It's now a three bedroom property. We'll show you the other rooms in a moment, but they've took the bathroom from the end and put it in here to what's called a dark bathroom. Just nicking a little bit of space out of this room and the room next door. So the cupboard that we covered up in the room next door is actually in the bath now and the lit, this just small section of this other bedroom means you've still got quite a large second bedroom and a decent sized third bedroom and fitted the bathroom in in the middle just next to the stairs. So really, really impressive what you've done here. So this is the second bedroom just next to the bathroom. So I guess we've yeah. put a partition wall up here yeah. and we've still kept a decent sized bedroom. Yeah, it's a good double bedroom. Again, same thing, I guess, plastered it, painted it, new radiators. But the really important part here is because we've kept this bedroom as a good sized bedroom and put the bathroom there, we've gained a third bedroom. So this used to be the old bathroom. Yeah, so this is the extra room now. So a lot of people watching this now, if you're looking in from home, this is how you could turn a two bedroom property into a three bed. Bathroom here directly above the kitchen, take part of your middle bedroom, your second bedroom. Take the cupboard space from the first bedroom and put your bath and your bathroom into the, that section of bedroom two, creating a third bedroom without needing to do an extension to your property. No extension needed, extra bedroom, massive value added to the property.
Thanks guys for showing us around. It looks absolutely fantastic. Completely different when we were here a few months ago. Let's go back to before you bought the property. What was your day job at the time and why did you decide property was something you wanted to get into? I've always been interested in property, but it was probably Christmas last year when I started to um, discover progressive property and the strategies that they taught, particularly BRR, which was a really good way of... So just for anyone listening, BRR is buy, refurbish, rent and then refinance. I have a full-time career in cybersecurity. Um, and this is something for the future for us, uh, for, for the kids, for their education, for, for sort of a legacy. So um, something that I always had in mind I wanted to do, but once I got more educated, I understood I could do it now. I didn't have to wait like 10 years yeah. or save loads of money. Um, so that was really crucial. So before all this, I was full-time mum. My, my background is marketing and events, which I always loved. Had two children, decided not to go back to work, but this was something that we knew we could do together, which is yeah. what, what mm. we've wanted for quite a while, haven't we, in terms of work? We wanted a business together, didn't we? And it yeah. was, to start with, took quite a while to figure out what that business might be uh, that would interest both of us. Uh, and now we've found something that you know, can fit around our other commitments that we're both interested in and that, you, know, you could bring your expertise to it as the, the marketing side as well. Why did you choose this house? How many properties did you view and, and why this one originally? Just before we bought this, I viewed about 30 properties uh, around here. The condition of the house and the location in town that I thought was good about it, um, but also the, the gap between what if I thought it could be worth in the future and what I could secure it for. You know, the gap was big enough. Now, a lot of people, when I meet them and they talk about property, they, they're looking for something where the condition is really good. You've looked at 30 properties or around 30 properties and you've picked this one because of the condition. What did you like about the condition? So it needed quite a lot of work doing to it. Right. And that was putting off a lot of buyers, you know, yeah. certainly your first time buyers and things. Um, it was empty, been empty for two years and it was not quite run down, but in need of modernization, as an estate agent would say. But actually buying something really bad, you can, actually, you can make more money because if you're going, you, here you've changed the wiring, you've changed the plumbing, you've replastered it, you've repainted it. It's almost good that it's in terrible condition because you're starting with a blank canvas. If you're watching this and you're getting started in property, look for something that's really run down if you're going to do significant work to the property because you're, start, you're better off starting with that blank canvas and then add the value. Just to remind people, what did you pay for the property in the first place? So we paid 103,767. Aiming to get it revalued at? Between 150 and 155. Okay, and what was your total spend? The budget for the refurb was about 15,000. So all in, including um, buying costs and holding costs, we'd be looking at about 130 to 134,000. At 134,000, you're looking at 16 grand of added value. 16 grand from one property in a few months. Average salary in the UK, 26 grand a year. 16 grand in equity in a property without having to really work for it because other people did most of the work. Alex didn't do a lot. <laughs> but that, that's not bad for your first project. Let's go back a bit about funding this. So how, how did you fund this property? So many people might know the story, but some people that are listening in right now probably they don't remember how this all came about. So do you want to go back to the stage of how the funding came about? It was during the July last year. Uh, I joined in the JV and fundraising challenge that you ran on Facebook. It was a, as a challenge all about putting yourself in the right position to raise finance. And at that point, I'd viewed some houses, but was nowhere near um, you know, securing a property really and didn't quite know how I was going to finance it. So we went through that week where we put ourselves in a really good position to, to look for funding. Um, and then we got the opportunity to pitch to yourself and Ray McLennan. Um, and we pitched, with, I found this property during that week, the, during the viewings. Um, and uh, we took that to, to you guys. I did a pitch um, and that was where we secured funding from yourself and to purchase a property. And I funded the refurbishment. That joint venture finance challenge was a seven day challenge we ran on, on social media, on Facebook. And at the start of the week, we had about 800 people on day one in the challenge. And what was really interesting about that seven days is that by day seven, we were down to around 100 people. So 800 people really wanted the opportunity to get started in property, to learn how to raise money, to find deals. Yet 700 of them quit in the first seven days. 
only a hundred were involved in the final day. Connect with people online, connect with people on social media, join the Progressive Property Facebook community, make sure you've subscribed to the YouTube channel and use the opportunity, use the knowledge. Anytime somebody gives you a chance to take part in a challenge, commit to doing the challenge, commit to going through the challenge and finishing it. So at the end of that challenge with over 800 people, we chose five people to pitch deals to us. And of those five, Alex won the, the funding. Are you waiting for funds out of this to do another deal? Or have you already secured your next deal? Where are you at on the building of the portfolio? So we're already working on our second deal. Okay. Uh, that's midway through the refurbishment right now. Okay, so purchased, refurb yeah. started, yeah. midway through. And that's purchased with investor funds again, in right. the same way as this one. Uh, we secured funding for the third property. Now, when, when you say investor funds, I funded this deal. The second deal is a completely different investor. Yeah. So you've now got the confidence as well to actually go and look for funding from just other investors. Yeah. Actually, for them, for me, doing the challenge, doing the social media activity, getting myself out there, built my confidence and built my credibility so that other people were then interested in lending me money and, and doing a project together. Yeah. And because so. we, set the, we wrote the, fo the folio, uh, which was part of your challenge, it meant that we sort of had the information at hand, didn't we? For people at the start who are thinking, why would somebody invest in me? Why would somebody lend me money? You've managed to raise funds now from two different people. Why do you feel that people are investing in you? I understand the numbers and I've got people around me who can help me deliver it. Um, you know, I'm not an expert in everything, but I can find people who are. Um, and I think that that, that and the motivation to, to keep going, to grow and to learn. And I think people really respond to that. A lot of people come and they pitch a deal to people and they overcook the egg. They say the deal's gonna be better than it's gonna be. They don't know their numbers. So they either say it'll be better than it'll be or they actually don't know their numbers. The reason I funded this was you were very clear about the fact that there would be some money left in. It wasn't a you know, huge, big, big, huge increase in value. We spoke about 16 grand added to the value. And you were very honest up front that you didn't know that it was your first project. You didn't try and pretend you had done other stuff. So it's not necessarily that you had credibility in having deals done already or experience of having deals done. It was more about the honesty that he knew what he had, he knew what it was worth, and he knew his numbers. But Zig Ziglar always says you don't need to be great to start, but you do need to start to be great. So it's about getting started on your journey. You've had somebody come around to value it for rental. Yes, we have. And what did they say it will rent at? So they said 675. So now that you've got this property finished, what are your future plans in property, future plans outside of properties? Where, and where do you want to get to, say, in a year's time, and where do you want to be the long-term dream? So I guess in a year's time, we, I would like us to be in a position where we've got sort of eight to 10 properties. Um, I, I'm more measure it based on the cash flow, if you like. But I want to be you know, probably halfway there to, to my medium-term goal which is to fund the kids' school and uh, you know, give myself the opportunity if I, you know, if I needed to, to replace my income. Um, you know, I really like working full time and I, I love my career. But if things changed, um, particularly with you know, the pandemic, you don't know what's happening. Uh, then I, I really like to have that safety net that I, you know, I've replaced my income. So that's kind of the medium term goal. And then the long term goal is to uh, give ourselves more time to spend with the children and to have more flexibility with you know, where we live and, and what we do by way of work. Okay, now this is the million dollar question. Are your goals the same? Yeah, thankfully we are on the same page. Um, I suppose I wanted to get back into work, um, which I haven't done since having the children, um, and this will enable me to do that, although I don't want to do it full time. Having two young children can be uh, pretty stressful sometimes. But yeah, I want Alex to be able to have the choice if he wants to leave his job or if he doesn't. Um, I still want us to be able to work together. The kids' schooling is a big thing. And then also just to have a little bit more flexibility of what we want to do and when, rather than yeah. having to work around everything else. So Alex and Kate, thanks for showing me around. You guys have done absolutely awesome on this project. It looks amazing. It really is a beautiful family home. So best of luck with the project, with your property journey. And yeah, thanks again for showing us around. I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, subscribe, smash that like button, and I'll see you next time.